for Kitten Surgeons can free the Black Watch. The market's unfair summary. Kitten's body catch and all that they listed was body and twall. It's me body, laddie, and come on. For it's over the mountains and over the main. It's through Gibraltar, they ran. Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So, bagpipers. Bit of a strange unit, kind of a hard one in a way to do a video on, like at least in my usual format, because they just don't really lend themselves to very, very exciting gameplay. Because in really the best case, it's still basically stood around as a support unit because the bagpipers actually do no damage at all. They are a fully support unit, the only sort of true support unit so far that we've got in the game. You can see they actually have zero damage completely across the board. So what is it exactly they do and what is it that kind of makes them an interesting unit? Well, of course, there are support units that they provide buffs to your allies and I suppose to you as a hero as well. Now, I kind of thought the easiest way was to break this down in a unit training. So let's hop over there and talk through their main abilities. So into the unit training and the abilities on bagpipes work as a toggle. So if I press one, that is going to toggle on the attack damage increase. Uh, and you can see it gives me that base percentage increase. Now after 10 seconds, that percentage increase is going to increase by 30%. So basically, if you can stay in position running one song for a period of time, for 10 seconds, then that um, ability increases. I can then activate Segway, which not only keeps the original percentage ability, it's given me 220 more attack damage, plus one second of a CC uh, immunity. I can then, of course, press 2 to switch song, and you do get a brief period of overlap between the attack and defense buff. But then, essentially, I'm basically onto the base defense buff, and we have to wait another 10 seconds before that 10% uh, defense buff then goes up by 30% to the next level to 13.5%. Well, I'm not quite sure how 10% to 13.5% works with a 30% increase, but hey-ho, you get the idea. And again, we can use Segway, it's going to give us that 150 base defense increase on top of the 13.5% defense increase we're getting from the abilities already. So you can see how that stacks, and of course you're getting that one second CC interruption, which is what's going to make Segway a really nice ability, and why it's a really important one to be able to get that timing correctly. So then, what about Veterancy Line? Well really, there are only two choices, basically at the end, because, well, it's a straight line, you have no options. You basically have the options um, for sort of Segway, which damage taken by bagpipers is reduced and their movement speed is increased slightly which seems to me a relatively small effect or they basically get this self heal so when they take damage um, they basically get a ticking self heal it seems to be more powerful than this um, node actually suggests in essence they take damage they get some of the health back through self heal and for me that seems definitely kind of the better one to go for and that kind of seems to work work quite well at least for me in terms of Doctrine-wise, really not a lot of options open to you. Obviously, I'm running both the Bagpiper Doctrines, the 600 health increase and the 9% extra movement speed. The only Epic Doctrine that seemed useful and that really is actually available to put on is the Sprint Doctrine, increased movement speed. Just kind of nice to have, can kind of get them moving around the map a little bit quicker when you're trying to relocate them. Other than that, just throw on a bit of piercing defense and a few little extra hit points just to make them that little bit more tanky. Obviously, you've got quite a few less hit points than actually what we had on the PTR server because we were in and around sort of 13 and a half, 14,000. But they are still a fairly tanky unit. And even though their defensive stats aren't really all that great, it's enough combined with the health to actually sort of, at least they hold up reasonably on the edge of battle. They don't just get slaughtered by a bit of ranger or a stray musket bomb or sort of anything like that. So, yeah, they do still hold up relatively well. So, what about playstyle? Well, I don't really have all that much to report here. I'm largely looking for the larger group fights. Obviously, the more units that you can buff at once, the better. So in this case, I've just kind of got them at the back. Obviously, they're buffing the not only the bracing medals, but also the crossbows here in this situation. 
I'm using my Segway just as those grey gray hairs hit to try and give the stun immunity, the CC immunity to the Bracing Medals. Although I think the grey hairs were about the end of their charge limit at that one. But still, you can kind of see how that Segway could actually be quite a useful ability for the stun immunity. And obviously I'm providing a buff across the whole point here for the whole team. So we're actually buffing a really large amount of units. And I think this is where the unit is useful and actually contributes something. I think in a one-on-one -on -one fight, you know, where you're just buffing one ally, then it's just not really worth it. You might as well actually just have a melee unit and be able to support in that way instead. A couple of interesting things to note. The, you need line of sight for the buff to take effect. So if I was to put these bagpipes round the corner, then you would not be getting the buff. The music basically needs a line of sight, which sounds a bit silly, I know, but that's how it works. The buff radius, though, is actually fairly large. They do have very slow movement speed, um, when they are playing. You can move them while playing, and there's no sort of repercussion to that, but they do have a fairly slow base movement speed. So if you toggle the ability off, they'll move a lot quicker, particularly with that 9% movement speed doctrine and the sprint doctrine, or you can just control click on a supply point and it will basically auto-cancel the music, and the unit will start running there a little bit faster. Every time I rewatch this clip, I'm not entirely sure how I missed those Axe Raiders. I just does somehow didn't click that they were enemy Axe Raiders, which was why I was just standing there. But actually, it nicely proves the point. Two of the unit are dead, and you can actually see a little bit of the self-heal going on from the unit because they took damage, so they're now healing themselves back up slightly. Um, but even as they then push down the stairs and further on into the fight, we're still getting the full attack damage buff from this unit, despite the fact that the you, you know a third of the unit is dead. So even with just a couple of models left, the unit still gives the full buff, so it doesn't really matter too much. So in that sense, it's kind of nice. You don't need to worry about keeping them all alive the entire game. And finally, it's worth pointing out that the abilities don't stack if you've got two units of bagpipes. So you see here we've got two units. I've got one and another allied player has got one as well. And both of us are currently on the attack doctrine, but there's only one attack buff given, so there's really no point in doing it. I then switch over to the Defence Doctrine, and that does apply. So that means now our allied units are both getting the attack buff, and they're also getting the defence buff. So that's really what you want to be doing if you're coming up with friendly bagpipers, just so you can actually get both abilities up to apply. And then it's just making sure you time your segue to make use of the CC immunity, and all the other usual stuff. Are they a unit worth unlocking? Not particularly. Um, it's going to be interesting to see sort of what, or if anything, use they have in Territory War, potentially. But I think for most battles, random battles, they're not necessarily a unit that most new players are going to be diving straight for from the off, because they're not really worth it. You do, of course, get support points for them now, which is nice. It makes them a little bit more worthwhile. But yeah, strange unit, a little bit of an odd one, but one that probably isn't worth unlocking as new players. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for a lot more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all on the next one.